I feel that political correctness could either be viewed as offending political sensibilities on the one hand to being overly polite on the other. And the question is how to balance. I feel we should be able to communicate what we think. And this should be as close as possible to the raw truth, whilst respecting our targeted audience. But what is for sure is that we do not want to camouflage our thoughts, uh, and nor do we want to offend others when trying to communicate our message. I believe in clear communications so that everyone knows where I stand on sensitive topics. But to be clear, conversation should be as close as possible to the raw truth without disrespecting the targeted audience. And I will answer this question by starting with a personal story. I recently participated in the student protest on climate change and decided to take my bicycle, ride my bicycle, from Pembroke to the university. I had two choices. I had to take the dangerous regional road or cycle up a very steep hill from Sweet East to San Juan. And I decided to take the dangerous route. We got to university. We marched to Valletta to Parliament which took me 45 minutes. We walked there. I descended and decided to go back by bus, thinking it would be the more quicker option. In actual fact, the trip back took one hour and 20 minutes, and we were stuck in traffic most of the way. So at the end of the day, it would have been quicker and healthier had I walked back from Valletta to the university. So the point I want to make here is that public transport is, will help make our society more beneficial, but more immediate solutions are to make other forms of transport more conducive to the public. So I do believe that we have to work towards making green lanes for bicycles, electric scooters, electric, electric bikes uh, accessible to our citizens, because this will in fact mean that um, citizens will be able to uh, to uh, travel in a much more clean environment and quicker if these solutions are at hand. These solutions should be coupled to comfortable and safe pavements. If we do that, we're already going to reduce traffic on our streets. When it comes to incentivizing public transport, it is pointless opting to take a bus if it will take you very long to end at your destination. So public transport has to offer rapid means of conveyance, which means that we have to reduce um, the traffic on the streets. And the way to do this is to prioritize uh, the establishment of bus lanes so buses can frequently cross from one destination to another without getting stuck in traffic. Coupled to this, we have to look at the long term. The long term, in my opinion, is not just the next 10 to 20 years, but the next 100 years. And we have to look towards building a metro system. It may not be profitable in the close future, but like I said, this has to be seen over a very long span of time. The London Underground, the French Undergrounds, were not built for the generations of the time, but for future generations. So we have to act responsibly and think about the future. So to recap, green lanes, pedestrian zones, bus lanes, and metro. To me, that is the solution towards efficient transportation in the future. To recap, uh, my professional experience is one based on 
security, including migration. And I've worked for eight years in, in Brussels in the institutions working on such related matters. So one natural focus for me would be to apply the knowledge and experience I have gained in these domains. Since I have worked in the field at the operational level, I feel that my contributions in the European Parliament will be relevant because I, I understand these dimensions and can contribute in a meaningful way. This means I will work towards making migration policy more comprehensive. I will work towards establishing legal channels for migration, but also means to deter um, migrants which wish to enter Europe illegally. And I would probably start my, my debates uh, by focusing on Libya. Uh, secondly, since I decided to enter politics because I have a passion for my country, uh, I believe that the best way to contribute to our society in Malta is by contributing in the Regions Committee and the Petitions Committee, because through these committees I can bring the Maltese citizens' concerns uh, to Europe, and their concerns are primarily regarding the overdevelopment of our little island. We are seeing that the um, certain decisions are not taking into account the sustainability of our environment. We believe that uh, Malta is only about here and now, and that future generations do not exist. So yes, I will work towards bringing quality of life to our little nation. I think migrant integration, naturally those which are having their asylum application processed, or those which have been given asylum, uh, should be made to feel part of our society uh, because it is in our interest and their interest that we learn to work together. For this to happen, what the government should do is ensure that said migrants are given every opportunity to contribute to our society. I personally would not approve of said migrants being left to live in communities where they are segregated from our societies. And we see this happening, unfortunately, in Marsa and Birzebuja. I believe that the migrants should be equitably spread around all towns and villages in Malta and they should put, be put to work immediately, for example, in local councils, even when they arrive, so that they can already start integrating with local societies, they can start becoming friends with the local population. I do not believe that creating ghettos helps the integration of migrants into our society, and so the government has to immediately take action to help refugees um, associate, become part of our society as soon as possible. We all know that this is not an easy subject to discuss, and it is not an easy subject because migration generally happens through mixed flows. And by this I mean you get migrants who do not warrant asylum mixing with migrants who warrant asylum. This is a situation that the European Union has not come to terms with and we are often faced with having to deal with irregular migration once it is too late and the migrants have arrived in Europe. Solutions need to be found outside Europe before migrants endanger their lives in the Sahara Desert or crossing the Mediterranean Sea. To do this, we have to look at holistic solutions. 
But what we have to do for sure is that ensure that those migrants which do not warrant or deserve asylum are sent back to their countries as soon as possible with dignity and those which warrant asylum are equitably distributed amongst all EU member states. Underpinning all our actions must be human dignity and safety of life. My answer to this is that I feel that Eurosceptic parties exist because Europe has failed particular sectors of our society or Europe has failed to market its successes, its daily successes on a daily basis. On the one hand, I understand people's sentiments regarding Europe. Europe has had huge successes bringing freedom, prosperity and stability to our societies. But it is also failing. Why? Because I feel that the Union has taken a number of short-term decisions, knee-jerk reactions, especially those regarding migration. It has had to make compromise on reform. And like I said, its communications machine is not functioning all that well. Brussels is very good at speaking to with each other, institution to institution, but I think it is failing at getting its message across to the European citizens. What is the consequence? The consequence is that we have anxious, frustrated and angry citizens who are seeking refuge in nationalistic and authoritarian governments. They are concerned about uncontrolled migration, about their pensions and about the quality of life. But I think we have to remind uh, European citizens that we make Europe the success it is. We have to remember the benefits that it has given us, prosperity, freedom and stability. But we need to reform it. We have to focus on improving the quality of life. We have to reward those hard workers, the small businesses. We have to remember that we have achieved a certain amount of protection through the EU institutions in terms of democracy, rule of law, crime and commerce. And we have to make sure that everyone pays their due taxes. But at the end of the day, if we go our separate ways, which is what the extreme parties want, what we will in effect be doing is losing our power to work together on the global stage, which makes us more of a competitive union. In other words, we will waste effort and lose efficiency. It's a situation which I am concerned about, not only because of the situation we find ourselves in now, but also because of the global world popula population which is expected to double in about 30 years' time. This is going to have negative repercussions on climate change, so key in addressing overpopulation is education. And education in one particular area, in the need to incentivize and develop businesses which have a focus on green energy. We know that most countries are based around the equator, at least those countries which are developing, the poorer countries, so they have good access to, to solar power. Um, so what Europe and other countries have to do is incentivize these countries, these developing countries, to build their economies based on clean energy with a view to exporting surplus energy to those economies which consume plenty of energy, as in European states. I feel they are indeed very worrying. And the best way to address these challenges is at the political level. But how do we do this? Politicians react to what the public have to say. 
if the public protest in the streets, they listen. So I think what is key is that we motivate our youth and we do this by first of all educating them. I therefore believe that the raison d'etre of our schools should be a sustainable environment. Um, if we do this, I think we'll be automatically motivating our youth. And at the end of the day, it is the right of our youth to fight for their future. If we do not preserve the environment for tomorrow's generations, we are acting irresponsibly. So we should respect our youth and help them fight for their cause. I find the situation to be one of concern. I say this um, after having listened to the thoughts of my two sons, young men in their early 30s, who are really indicating that they are probably not expecting to leave home until the age of around 30. Um, we also have the situation of Maltese families with children um, who are renting up properties, accommodations, some of them single parents, and have to compete with uh, the foreign workforce, workers of which are frequently single and willing to share apartments with co-workers, sometimes even rooms. So we have a very um, unfair situation uh, in our hands, in my opinion. I think it's unfair on parents like myself who are being compelled to demolish their houses to build apartments, in the meantime ruining our urban environment. And I think it's unfair on families who have to compete with these foreign workers. The situation needs to change. I feel that the government has failed and that it has not yet been able to provide suitable government housing for the less fortunate in seven years, although we claim to have a financial surplus. This for me is a sign that the government has not got the situation in grip. I feel that it, it, with, if in the next few years the government does not find solutions, we should be looking at more stringent measures to be able to make accommodation, um, accommodation affordable. I do believe that in worst case scenarios we have to look at taxing vacant properties and possibly even regulating the rental market. But this is in the extreme situation if we do not manage to get a grip of the current situation. But before delving into my opinion, I have to underline why I think it is beneficial for countries to pertain to the EU. I think the EU has made all 28 countries more prosperous because it has managed to champion four areas, which are the free movement of goods, capital, services and people. Now, the EUK managed to have some exceptions in that it decided not to be part of the Schengen area, which means it can control migration into the United Kingdom, and it chose to retain its own currencies so it can have a certain degree of financial independence when it comes to monetary policies. Having said that, when it comes to negotiating UK's Brexit position, I feel that the EU should be firm and the EU, that the benefits of membership in the European Union should be prioritised, whilst we should nationally offer the best conditions to the UK to leave the Union. I believe we already have found the right balance now between federalism and autonomy. But yes, Europe can become more efficient, more effective. But let's start from basics. I believe that decision-making powers should not lie with European institutions, but should lie with member states. 
member states meet in Brussels. So when we talk about Brussels deciding, we're not talking about the European institutions, institutions deciding, but member states deciding in Brussels. But Brussels should not become the capital of Europe. We should not move to a United States of Europe because we are not ready for it. And in fact, we are decades away from maturing into this status. But we also have to realize that we're living in a globalized world where Europe is competing with the United States, with China, with Russia and India. So the question is, how do we make ourselves more competitive, both politically and economically? And the way to do this is by combining our resources. And by resources, I mean our human resources, our financial resources, our research and our technologies. And we do this to provide state of the art products, cutting edge products, which are superior to those of other countries. And we're already doing this with, for example, Galileo, which is, an, uh, which is a, a navigation satellite system, and Copernicus, which is a satellite observation, uh, observation system. But how can we improve the European Union? Many of you have heard that and believe that the European Union is a bureaucratic institution, and I believe it is the case. I believe that we have to make our institutions more effective in drafting regulations, prompting solutions, and ensuring that decisions that member states made are implemented in a correct and fair manner. Uh, how can we do this? We can do this by making the Brussels technocrats more efficient in their functions. After having worked in Brussels for seven years, I believe that the Brussels, um, Brussels institutions are indeed bureaucratic because its civil servants are not incentivized to work towards results-based solutions. I think the, the, the Brussels civil servants need to be given more incentives to work towards uh, objectives, objectives to which they would warrant due promotion rather than having job satisfaction as the raison d'etre of their employment. It has also asked about uh, actions I would take if elected as a member of the European Parliament and the Maltese government legislated in favour of marijuana as a recreational drug. And I will start by replying this question by bringing a personal consideration into this argument. I have two sons, both in their early tw 20s, you know, and I would pose the question, how, I would, how would I feel if uh, I got to know that my two sons were taking marijuana for recreational purposes? And to be honest, I feel uncomfortable about it. Whilst I feel that marijuana could be considered as a light drug and could be considered as being relatively less dangerous than other forms of drugs, uh, we know through studies that the long-term use of marijuana can lead to brain damage. We also know, I also know, I also am certain that marijuana is a gateway drug to other drugs. And I say this having been an adolescent myself and knowing human nature. And human nature is such that we are a curious species. We take a kick out of taking a bit of risk and out of experimenting. And those which may have had a positive ex uh, experience with marijuana would want to experience and try out other drugs. I know it. I have seen it. And for me, this is dangerous because we all know that other drugs are addictive. They can have a very negative effect on our lives. Um, if our children, our friends become addicted to drugs, we all know the consequences. So I would rather err on the side of caution and avoid marijuana becoming illegal, uh, uh, legal 
rather than legalizing it and make making the susceptibility of our youth to other drugs uh, more possible. So the second argument is what I would do if the Maltese legislated in favor of this becoming a re uh, recreational drug and I was a member of the European Parliament. First of all, I think democracy should be respected. But I also feel that if the government legislated in favor of marijuana becoming a recreational drug, it should do so because it should feel that the majority of our population are convinced of this argument. And it should not do so to attract a minority of our population to its political leanings. So if I am convinced that the government legislated because the majority of the population wanted cannabis as a, re as a, as a recreational drug, I would certainly not object. Well, this all boils down to my background. I lived, I worked in a military uh, environment, which is a relatively close environment for almost 30 years. Um, I was never a lawyer, never a journalist, but I was a diplomat in Brussels uh, during my service in the armed forces. So I, I understand the international machine, the Brussels institutions. I also have a naval background, uh, which has a, had a focus on migration. So automatically, you could surmise that my focus, my career, has always been externally related. So, if elected to Brussels, my areas of, of um, of work will definitely be focused around security and migration issues which affect Malta. But since I have a passion for my country, I will also endeavor to participate in two committees dealing with regions and petitions so that I can safeguard our local communities, particularly in the area of urban development, uh, because I think this is an area which is challenging our country. Mm -hmm.